and then replaces the Perona for the Doflamingo. Beautiful play. Like, I, I think that this was perfectly executed by John. And that and this is what I wanted to show in this video. <laughs> Drawing one here, getting two Dawn, and now it's time to have fun. We have 10 Dawn on the Ivankov. We have Luffy, we have Ivankov, we have Crocodile all on board. And so right now, you could you have two options you either play offense or defense and i know that sounds stupid but i mean you either push through for lethal or if you feel like you can't secure lethal you go full defense <clears throat> so what does john decide to do here decides to play his don quixote do flamingo gonna look at the top five cards of his deck and the beautiful thing about this well, that's a beautiful combo is he can set that up and then also use new comma land to go ahead and draw so it looks like he's going to put another don quixote do flamingo to the top of his deck here and then of course he can new comma land and draw into that card meaning that he would have double blockers this turn where he would have never had and that is the power of new comma land so he sets that back taps one new comma land so now he's going to be able to have double blocker so for him he's thinking okay i can't get lethal this turn so I want to be able to at least put pressure on him, but then also still be able to um, protect myself for next turn. So attaching three Dawn to Perona and swinging. So why, right? Why attach three Dawn to Perona and swing here? Again, utilizing Dawn, you want to maximize your numbers. Why swing with your other big body units first? So when you want, you want to use your lower body units first because in that way you can get easy counters out of hand or maybe bait them into using an early blocker. So very smart play, gets one blocker out. Of course, he could go ahead and use the Luffy here, but then if he does, he would have to discard the Doflamingo or an Ivankov, which is something he really doesn't want to do. And he has a Dawn, right? So why do it? He can go ahead and just attach one Dawn to the Ivankov, gets a 2k counter out of hand, which is really good. Swings with Crocodile, 7k, gets blocked by Chopper. Now there's no more blockers on board. Swings with 7k Vankov, gets rid of the Zoro, so just like that, the board is being controlled. Can still swing with Luffy as well. Which actually at this point, considering the game state, wouldn't be too bad to go ahead and use the ability now. Because now you'll be able to have no cards on board, and that is actually extremely valuable. It's actually better to have that because you're going to be able to... Uh, completely ruin your opponent's leader ability it's basically in a, a vanilla at that point so it's actually worth ditching the Ivankov because at this point you don't really need the Ivankov and then replaces the Perona for the Doflamingo beautiful play like I, I think that this was perfectly executed by John and that and this is what I wanted to show in this video right the power of Doflamingo, the power of New Kama Land, the power of recognizing to attack with your lower units first, right? All of these things were beautifully done in this turn because all of a sudden he could have tried to push for lethal. Some people might have pushed for lethal here. You have a double attacker. Sure, there's blockers, but you can bounce cards back to hand, etc., etc. But instead he's like, I'm going to play this smart. I know that in this deck, he's going to have to have a full board in order to do shenanigans in terms of rush. There's the rush Luffy potentially, but then there's the Zoro. But I have two blockers on board. Will he have Diablo Jamb? Maybe. But that's a risk you take. You have two copies because in theory, and also he'll get to draw two here. In theory, if he had it, he could have Diablo Jamb here. Uh, he could play Zoro, Diablo Jump, attach all the rest of the Dawn to Zoro, and then swing for game. Um, but, doesn't have it. Here's the Nami. Nami searching. Will he search for the Diablo Jump? I don't I actually have no clue if he plays it in this list anyway, so. What does he decide to do? Pulls the Brook. Julie Bonnie. Julie Bonnie's gonna search. Gets a round table. Round table, really good card. Minus uh, 10k, so you can go ahead and start killing stuff. But they, it's 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 looking pretty dicey now. Brook going to be able to play Nami. Nami on play effect. 
searching for Chopper. And look at that. Got rid of the board, and thanks to film, already almost has a full board. Going to attack with the Trafalgar Law. Easy block with the Doflamingo. Passing turn. No blockers on the side of the Law player now. This is where you push for game. No blockers. Don't have to worry about it. You can double hit. You do the math, depending on how many cards your opponent has in hand. They take the double hit, and then you just try to go for game. It's literally, at this point, just math. So if you think about it, you know that he added round table to hand. Round table is one less card, meaning that he has three cards in hand. Those three cards, you don't know. Oh, I believe he also knows what one of the other ones would be off of the Nami search, which has a counter. So at most, he knows that one's a 1k counter. So at most, it could be 5k. So let's see how much he decides to put on. There's a Luffy, wants to get the guaranteed hit. Bouncing the Nami back to hand. Double hit, two cards to hand, Sabodi hits in trigger. He had two Sabodis in trigger, wow. Able to get the chopper, but now look. He has so many attacks. He can attach one Dante Do Flamingo, attack. Decides to attack a crocodile to get two cards out of hand. Boom, very smart. Attack, two cards out of hand. Boom, and that's game. Very, very good stuff. Patient gameplay. I like this. I like this. It was a little bit risky. It was a little bit close, really bit, a, a little bit risky. But that's why I wanted to show this game because I thought that it was close. I thought it was fun. It wouldn't be fun to watch a game that's a complete stomp. Hopefully, you guys have some insight on how to pilot Evankov. Hopefully, you guys can test it as well. You might have some fun with it. I think it's really, really fun to pilot. It's one of the only decks that really draws. Um, so if you like drawing a lot of cards, you're coming from other games where you get to search and draw and stuff like that. Um, this deck definitely fits that build. There's no other deck in the game that can do that. It's very strong. And obviously, he took the entire event with this. So with that being said, I hope you guys all have an amazing day. Hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.